going to be quite a fun day to watch the sports. Men's basketball on the road again against NGIT, coming off of James Dale's 32-point per performance, a career high for him. As he's looking, trying to get everybody else involved today to try and avoid the sweep of NGIT. And we got a lot more action today as well in sports. Got some New York locals, any NFL championship games upcoming later today. But back to college basketball as Pagan Litwinko for the tip-off. Pagan has the height against Litwinko, and she easily wins the tip. Stony Brook will get first possession left to right on the court. Seems Kimmy Evans at 6'4 would usually have a good chance as much as any of Pagan does to work on those tip-offs every now and then. Yeah, I'm not sure why they had Litwinko taking the tip. They had that yesterday, and a quick turnover. India Pagan was looking for Erlet Scott, who was cutting, and Erlet Scott just could not corral that pass. That was a hard pass, and an errored one off the hand of India Pagan. So like we mentioned, Stony Brook very clean basketball yesterday, only six turnovers, but an immediate turnover on the first possession. Wide open lane, closed quickly on the left side. Ellen Stoll nowhere to go, kick back out for Squire. Elbow jumper no good, fight for the board. India Pagan picks it up for Stony Brook, and they take it across the timeline. Here comes Asia Dingle, slicing through the paint. Picks up her dribble and sends it over to Annie Warren on the right wing. Back up top to Dingle. Feed inside to India Pagan. Looking to post up inside the paint. Turn around. Baby hook is an air ball. No good. Fight for the board underneath. Dingle goes back up with it. She can't hit a little bit too short. And here comes NJIT. Well, Dingle and Victoria Johnson both had their fair shares of their shots coming up short. Can't tell whether or not the height is probably one of the problems. And unfortunate for Pagan since she usually looks good when only single teamed. Whistle off the ball and an offensive foul against NJIT off an illegal screen. It looks like they're calling it a three-second violation. You know what? They did call a three-second violation yesterday, too. That's not a call you see too often, but these officials all over that call. Like I said, it's usually a rare one. Oh, a cutting. Annie Warren gets to the basket. No one was near her. Annie Warren saw the, saw the wide open back door and took advantage of it. Stony Brook gets on the board first. It's 2-0. 90 seconds off the clock in the opening quarter. Smothering defense by Stony Brook. Here comes Stoll driving to the cup. And that's closed off quickly. Swing back out to Squire. Now it's Lily Anderson getting all the way to the basket. Reverse layup good off the glass and in. Nice tough force that she put up against Mackenzie Boucher. Boucher has a big body, but she just couldn't really keep well with the distance. Just needs to be careful that she doesn't get too many fouls. Annie Warren left wing, picks up her dribble up top to India Pagan, swings it back around to Asia Dingle, picks up her dribble left elbow, sends it underneath to India Pagan, posting up, and she swooshes it in. Well, that's usually bothered with India Pagan. She was inside the paint on her last attempt to try and get the points, and sometimes her jumpers have looked really phenomenal in her first points of the game. A little over two minutes off the clock. It's 4-2 Stony Brook. NJIT with possession. Another whistle and now a travel call against Lizzie Litwinko. Stony Brook working to try and gain some early ground in this game like they did yesterday, starting it off with a 7-0 run. They've been known to get off of early runs before, but if anything, it's all about being able to manage holding on to that lead, especially if you want it to be big entering halftime. And now Grace Plummer comes in for Litwinko, who fouled out yesterday. Just called for the travel, heads to the bench. Annie Warren holds right wing, sends it back around to the left wing. Got India Pagan. Back up top to Boucher. Back around to the left wing. Annie Warren almost throws it away and does. Lily Anderson picks it up off the floor. And NJIT pushing in transition. Quickly the other direction. Squire all the way to the cup, off the glass and in. That was a very tough play to make. She was really double teamed inside that paint. It may have, the ball may have been tipped a little bit, but went in the direction that Squire wanted to go. Tie game at four with three minutes gone by in the first quarter. Mackenzie Boucher, tight defense on her at the top of the key. Hands it off to Asia Dingle. Back to the right corner. And the three ball on the way, off the back of the rim, no good. That was Asia Dingle who put it up. And still a 4-4 ball game. Three and a half gone by. Here comes Stoll. Kick to the corner, Plummer. Back up top to Squire. A lot of passing going on. Now underneath. The reverse layup is good. Kimmy Evans gets on the board. And for the first time in, these, in this series, NJIT has the lead. 6-4 over Stony Brook. Well, they had a lot of chances to take the lead yesterday against Stony Brook, but Stony Brook's defense really continued to stiffen up. They need to do a lot more of that, including the offense, early in this game. 
Erlet Scott trying to get to the hoop, loses possession. Lily Evans on the floor, picks it up. And here comes NJIT in transition. They can extend what's a two-point advantage right now. Evans looking to post up Pagan. Spins to the cup, off the glass, no good, but a foul called against India Pagan, and Evans will head to the free throw line. Same situation as it was just in the last possession. Still, India Pagan was trying to work her force against Danny Evans, but it just couldn't get down the way she wanted to on that first one. Tried to do it the second time, and it seems like it may lead to two points again. India Pagan having a conversation right now with the officials. And she'll head to the bench. Coming in for her is Leah Amori Wool, who had a good game yesterday, not a, not a very efficient one at just four for 11 on the floor. First shot from Evans, rolls around, no good. Still 6-4 NJIT. But she finished with 10 points and seven rebounds coming off the bench, did Wool. Kimmy Evans has her problems sometimes. She's just 42% from the free throw line, but she gets her seconds. One for two from the line is Evans, and it's a three-point lead for NJIT with nearly half the clock gone in the first quarter. Foul called on the pass. Annie Warren was trying to get the handoff, and it was an offensive foul against Stony Brook, so a turnover on the Seawolves will give NJIT back possession with 5.43 remaining in the first quarter and a 7-4 lead for the Highlanders. Hard to see that as an offensive foul since it was a little trouble to get to the ball, if anything, so you have to imagine that it must have been the Highlanders' fault, but the refs saw it the other way. Squire nowhere to go at the top of the perimeter. Now Evans trying to drive baseline and a whistle blown. Foul called against Stony Brook. Stony Brook hasn't been able to draw any fouls in these first, first four and a half minutes of action. And now it seems like it's happened. Now NGIT has been able to do better with being able to draw those fouls. Another substitution. Boucher checks out. And Haley Zeiss comes in. Haley Zeiss was a consistent starter on this team. Didn't start yesterday, didn't play at all yesterday, but now comes off the bench today. Feed inside to Fuchs. She can't handle it. It was a tough pass. NGIT trying to fight to get the ball back. They do with eight seconds to shoot. Kick out Squire for three. Off the back of the rim, no good. And Zeiss, who just checked in, skies for the board. Here comes Dingle, picks up her dribble, sends it out to Warren, drives baseline, smothering defense, nowhere to go, peels it back out, and Warren now picks up her dribble. Feed inside, here comes Zeiss, trying to post up, nowhere to go, kick back out to the corner for three, got it! All right, let's go, as you said, had a slow start yesterday against NJIT, but this three of hers that's able to tie the game could give herself a boost to try and work on a good game. Erlet Scott yesterday with only three points in the 25 minutes she played, Already has three points. That ties up the game at seven. Here comes Plummer. Drives baseline. Kick to the corner. Squire loses the ball. Pickpocketed. And here comes Dingle. Struggling with the handle. Trying to drive to the cup. Dishes it off. Zeiss no good on the layup. She was wide open. The ball is loose and picked up by Squire. Now pushing the other way. Good job getting back on defense for Stony Brook. Kicks it back out to Litwinko. Now a three ball. Misses too strong. Off the hand of Fuchs, and Stony Brook will pick up the rebound. Tie ball game at seven with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Warren thinks about a three, drives baseline. Now long two on the way, rattles it home, and Stony Brook back on top by two. Well, Warren, Warren makes those shots look good. She had herself a good game as well yesterday. She was also part of that double digits. A lot of passing going on on the NJIT side. Lily Anderson to the cup, no good on the layup, trying to post up down low, and Asia Dingle will push the other way. Dingle slicing inside the paint, layup off the mark, a little bit too strong off the glass, and the ball knocked out of bounds. Stony Brook will maintain possession with 3.36 remaining in the first quarter. Stony Brook on top by two, 9-7, as we head to our first break. You're listening to Stony Brook women's basketball in the longtime home of the Seawolves. 90.1 FM, WUSB Stony Brook, back to Natasha in the studio. Stony Brook on top of NJIT, 9-7 with three minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Thanks for joining us on WUSB, Jonah Carp and Zach Wilson. Well, here's the thing, Zach. Stony Brook has the lead by two, and they have possession, but they already have four turnovers in this game, and they had just six yesterday. As Annie Warren holds at the top of the key for Stony Brook, sends it back out for three, Wool can't hit, rebound Stony Brook, foul called on the floor, Haley Zeiss skied for the board. 
And that foul is going to go against the Highlanders. Well, yeah, you said it right there. Four turnovers so far for Stony Brook. NJIT does have three, but Stony Brook is leading that rebounding cat. Of course, this is why Stony Brook has that early lead again. Shot clock resets to 20. Off the inbound pass, it goes back out. Gigi Gonzalez. So Gigi Gonzalez, 10 seconds to shoot. Annie Warren holds. Stony Brook has to put it up. Warren slicing inside the paint. It's off the hands of Gonzalez. She couldn't handle it. And with 3.08 remaining, NJIT will get the ball back on what looked like a just a bad offensive possession for Stony Brook. I think they didn't keep pace with what the sh where the shot clock was at. And by the time they did, it cost them, cost them a mistake. Now here comes Grace Plummer for NJIT. Again, a lot of passing going on around the perimeter, just not a lot of momentum going on in offense. Plummer pops to three. She can't hit from downtown right wing. And Gonzalez will take it across the floor for Stony Brook. Still leading by two, 240 remaining. Gonzalez looks back to Caroline McCombs to get the play. And sends it up top to Wool. Annie Warren now holds downstairs to Wool. Has an angle, can't hit on the righty layup. Gets her own board and puts it back up and in. Leo Mori Wool following up a missed shot, and the Seawolves have a four point advantage. Well, she's always being alert with being able to get those rebounds. Her big body allows her to do that. Zeiss saves the arid pass that was going to go out of bounds. Up ahead to Gonzalez, hands it off to Warren. Back out, Zeiss for three. Misses well too short. Ball out of bounds, and that's going to go back to the Highlanders. Zeiss is two of 22 this season from three point range, and that's not a good stat to have. She, has, she was pretty good with her three-pointers last season, including a, including a clutch one that she made early in the fourth quarter in that America East semifinal game against Binghamton, when Binghamton was just about to have some momentum to pull back, but Zeiss delayed it for, for good. Up the floor comes Lizzie Litwinko. Silent so far, hands it off to Squire. NJIT trailing by four, 11-7, with less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Litwinko. Holds at the top of the perimeter. Sends it right to Stoll. Stoll trying to get inside the paint. Off the glass and in. Very tough play to make, but Stoll senior, having that veteran experience to make those shots, shows you how she's been trying to work her way as an elite player on the team. Gonzalez hands it off to Leah Mori Wool. Up top to Haley Zeiss. Back around to Scott. Foul called on the floor as Wool was looking for an angle downstairs against Evans, and Evans will be called for the foul with one minute and 24 seconds left in the first quarter. Wool looking hard on being able to draw the foul. She's been working on some big plays recently in the last few minutes, getting the second chance opportunity. Janae Cox holds in the corner. Over to Gonzalez, right wing. NJIT not playing very tight defense, only six seconds to shoot. Pulls up for a long two from the short corner. Gonzalez can't hit. And the Highlanders get the board again. Winko swims to the cup, trying to go coast to coast and does. Off the glass and in. Another defensive standby. Stony Brook that she was able to feed out. It was very impressive. 50 seconds remaining. A steal on the other side. The Highlanders pushing in transition. Looking to capitalize. A tie ball game at 11 apiece. Croc Cross-court pass, drive baseline, Litwinko throws it away, but a foul called? Well, it's going to stay with NJIT regardless. 40 seconds to shoot, 21, or excuse me, 21 seconds to shoot, 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Well, from our angle, I couldn't really tell whether or not it hit off one of the Seawolves. Litwinko inbounds it and gets the ball back. Sends it to the left, stole for three, got it. Once again, NGIT takes a three-point lead after Stony Brook has some good momentum, but now it's a 7-0 run by the Highlanders. And the shot clock turned off. 24 seconds to shoot for Stony Brook. Gonzalez drifts to her right, sends it up top to Wool. 15 seconds to shoot. Wool now pulls up for three. Splash! Nice response by Amori Wool. Five, four, here comes NJIT to the cup, Squire bounces it home. And that'll do it for the first quarter. NJIT in the waning seconds takes a two point advantage over the Seawolves, 
as we head to the second quarter. Not before a quick break, you're listening to Stony Brook Women's Basketball in the longtime home of the Seawolves, 90.1 FM, WUSB Stony Brook. Back to the studio. 14, NJIT has the lead over Stony Brook. Stony Brook has possession, kicks it back up top. Asia Dingle long two from the elbow, got it. Well, there's been some good jumpers rolling around so far, and sorry for that late much of a call, but if anything, we were able to keep track with the last few points. Jonah Carp and Zach Wilson with you on WUSB. 40 seconds off the clock. A three-pointer is no good off the hand of Fuchs. And here comes Stony Brook Fuchs with a tie ball game. Fuchs was wide open and just couldn't finish. Feet underneath the cup. Boucher posts up and puts it home. Well, it looks like Stony Brook's able to get on a little run themselves. They gave it to NGIT in the last minute, but Stony Brook trying to retake control. One minute off the clock in the second quarter. Litwinko all the way to the cup. Righty layup puts it down. Litwinko's been doing a lot today. After she fouled out, didn't have a big performance yesterday. This is how she's been this is how she's been making herself look like a three-time America East Rookie of the Week this season. 18-18. Boucher holds right wing, sends it up top to Leia Amori Wolf. Feed inside to Boucher. Has an angle along the baseline, floats it up with the right hand. No good. Cox gets the offensive board and resets for Stony Brook. Just being able to signal Dingle because she thought that the ball was going back to the Highlanders. Cox almost has it poked away. Still 18-18, eight seconds to shoot. Dingle has the ball, trying to drive along the left alley. Hands it off to Leia Mori. Whoa, long two, got it. Man, these long range jump, these mid and long range jumpers for Stony Brook so far in this game has been looking pretty decent. And I think with plays like this, it's going to put Stony Brook a good chance to try and sweep again, as long as they keep the defense stifling as well. Evans holds left wing. Feet underneath. Litwinko now spinning inside the paint. Wild shot can't hit. And Dingle gets the rebound. She's had some wild shots so far today, and they've practically been in most of the time. Dingle slicing, swimming, puts it up and in off the square. Another great shot, and this is the offense that Stony Brook has been looking for to try and push them up today. Not too much of that early in the first half yesterday, but a strong, like, strong one like this gives them a good push. Baseline feed to Evans, spins inside, can't hit on the righty layup. Had a chance to go in, but did not. Quickly the other direction, Scott for three, misses too strong, and a whistle blown, tie up underneath the basket. Cox took, goes to the ground, so does Squire for NJIT. Stony Brook's been looking to try and work something down after the first few minutes, but right now it looks like Joni Cox is slow to get up. She's still down right now. She's sitting, she's standing, she's sitting up, but I don't, I guess they're just. Well, she gets up under her own power. And the shot clock will reset to 20. Stony Brook will maintain possession. Seven minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Seawolves by four. Cox gets the inbound pass in the corner. It's deflected, and Asia Dingle gets it back for Stony Brook. Feet underneath. Boucher posts up, puts it in. Another good shot. Stony Brook starting to work on a nice little 10 2 run against the Highlanders. Largest lead of the game so far. Six point advantage. Stole for three. Well off. Barely grazes the bottom of the glass. And here comes Dingle pushing quickly. Sends it back out. Leia Amori Wool misses too short from downtown. Cox prepared to pick up the rebound, but it just went too high over her head to her to make a board. Litwinko picks up her dribble, sends it right and out of bounds. Looking for Stoll, who set up shop on the right corner. But that was off her hands and out of bounds. Stony Brook will take over. 24-18 the score. Seawolves over the Highlanders. Well, this is a very, very... Big way to start the second quarter for Stony Brook. And it's with India Pagan and Warren checking back in, let's see if the offense can stay where it is because this is giving them a good confidence builder. Already 10 points in the first, just in just over three minutes. Six minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Fast pace and now scoring starting to pick up here in quarter number two. Erlet Scott holds left wing, feed underneath the basket to India Pagan trying to post up. Turnaround jumper is a little bit too short. Here comes Litwinko moving right to left on the court. Sends it left to Stoll. Underneath the basket, Lily Anderson muscling her way inside. Has it swatted back by Boucher. Gets the ball back. Kick to the right corner. Here comes Stoll spinning inside. Foul called. Nope, a travel. And that defense for Stillingbrook. Anderson could not get a shot on there against Boucher. She played good defense on the block. Pretty amazing. 
approaching the six minute mark here in the second quarter. As Boucher inbounds it to Dingle, who looks over to McCombs and gets the play, moving sauntering left to right. Dingle, left elbow jumper, puts it down. Another good shot, another good jumper. We've been seeing a lot of big jumpers made by the likes of Wool, Boucher, and Dingle in this contest. That's why Stony Brooks are not looking good. And another travel, this time on Kimmy Evans, who is holding at the top of the perimeter. Before she passed it, she shuffled her feet. And off another NJIT turnover, the Seawolves get it back. Well, this is pretty much similar to the run that Stony Brook had late in the fourth quarter that led to their win yesterday. And they seem to be pulling it off once again. Like I said, they are known to get those those early leads in the game. And they don't do too much of that in the second quarter, but now in this quarter, how about it? Scott on the left side, sends it back up top to Annie Warren. Inside feed, here comes Dingle. Puts it down and one. I don't know what kind of fire that Stony Brook was able to catch to start the second quarter, but whatever it was, it has been really showing them to be quite that force that they are trying to prove themselves to be. The sea, wolves, the sea Wolves have opened up a 10-point advantage, and it'll stay at 10 as Dingle misses the free throw a little bit too strong. Here comes NJIT, 28-18 with five and a half left in the second quarter. See if Stony Brook can continue to keep this fire or it gives the Highlanders some way to try and get back in the game. Feet underneath to Squire, foul called on the floor against Warren. Squire is doing a lot of work underneath. And Squire is not a big player, only five foot nine. As Victoria Johnson checks in for the Seawolves in place of Erlet Scott. Johnson also had a little playing time and her being undersized. This has been a bit of a problem for her trying to be a contributor this season. Lily Anderson sends it left. Aria Myers got a little bit of playing time yesterday. Back up top to Lily Anderson, only seven seconds to shoot. Kick back out, NJIT has to put it up. They do, long three is no good from Kennedy Cash. And here comes Stony Brook. Under five to play, sent right, Victoria Johnson for three, can't hit. Long rebound goes to Annie Warren, crashes to the ground, and a foul called on NJIT. It's against Aria Myers, only saw one minute of action, immediately called for the foul here. And out of this quick timeout, Stony Brook will maintain possession on top by 10. You're listening to Stony Brook women's basketball in the longtime home of the Seawolves, 90.1 FM, WUSB Stony Brook. Nice little, nice little run by Stony Brook. Yeah. A sloppy basketball on NJIT. How many turnovers do they have? They have seven turnovers. Stony Brook's still at five. Mm -hmm. J-Mac attacking one, eh? They're up, but last I checked, wait, that was 10 minutes ago. So, interesting. The senior, Jordan McKenzie? Yeah. I'll tell her when she could, she'll come back to us. All right. So usually there's an under four timeout. Oh. Oh. I think this is the media timeout, though. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. Back here at Island Federal Arena, the Sea Wolves have opened up a 10 point advantage over the Highlanders. With you on this Sunday matinee, Jonah Carp and Zach Wilson. A nice little run by the Sea Wolves, Zach, to put them up by 10. Yeah, they looked really strong in the second quarter. They have outscored NJIT 14 to seven. Four minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Feet inside, Leia Mori Wool couldn't handle it. Ball batted up and taken down by Squire. And here come the Highlanders the other direction, right to left on the court. Cash pushes in transition and sends it up top to Myers. Swung back around, now feet inside. Squire posting up again and can hit the layup. Asia Dingle gets the rebound, foul called on the floor, and that's going to go against Stony Brook. It's actually against NJIT, oh. a loose ball foul. You're right. At first, it looked like I was watching Asia Dingle. It looked like she was a little bit confused, leading me to think that it was against Stony Brook. Either way, they inbound it, and Asia Dingle takes it across the floor. Victoria Johnson sends it right. Here comes Annie Warren for three, rattles it home. 
Annie Warren is a consistent three-point shooter. She averages just over 30% with her, with her shots, and that continues to open the hole for Stony Brook offensively. Cash driving baseline, player on the floor, and a charging foul. Nice job by Victoria Johnson drawing the charge against Kennedy Cash. And with under four minutes remaining in the second quarter, the Seawolves, up by 13, will get the ball back. I have never seen them catch fire in a second quarter like this. You've seen what they've done the, over the last few seasons. Their second quarter action, not as consistent as you would think it would be, but this really put, puts those stats to rest today. 31-18. Yesterday's game was close in the second half. This one looks like a blowout early on. Victoria Johnson drives baseline and a travel called against her. So NJIT will get the ball back with about three and a half remaining in the second quarter, but they're trailing by 13. Johnson usually has, Johnson had herself a good angle to go from deep, but because she has not yet hit one this season, that has put her in that doubt mode. Litwinko picks up her dribble, sends it outside to Cash. Now Lily Anderson holds right wing. Again, a lot of passing, but not a lot of movement on the NJIT offense. Inside, Cash trying to bank it home. She can't. And it's picked up by Leia Amori Wool. Stony Brook again in transition. Asia Dingle back up top to Wool. Just hands it back out to Dingle, and she'll reset the offense. Outside Johnson, feet underneath to Pagan, trying to post up. Puts the ball on the floor, spins around, turn around, jumper, got it, and one. Had herself a three-point play like that yesterday in the fourth quarter, and she does one again. Pagan hasn't been getting herself with the strong looks over the last few games, but a strong look there. She heads to the free throw line. India Pagan puts Stony Brook up 33 to 18. Three minutes on the dot remaining in the second quarter. Here's the free throw. Misses too short. That's not a strength for Stony Brook, and they've shown that in this game. This is just, they only had two free throw attempts so far overall. None of them has gone in today. Cash for three, misses from the corner, and Dingle grabs the board. Still pushing in tempo, spin around, kick back out. Warren for three, misses left side of the rim, fight for the board underneath the basket. A lot of NJIT players fighting for it. One fell to the ground. Same team, guys. Either yeah. way, the Highlanders take it across. That always bounds to happen. You don't know which one's going to call it. Turnaround jumper near the basket, misses too short. Stony Brook the other direction. Asia Dingo pushes quickly, kick back out. Warren again wide open for three, misses left again, and Cash guys for the board. Uh, two wide open three point looks for Anastasia Warren, and she had one before, but she doesn't have the easy look so far. Ball bounces out of bounds. Last touch by Dingo. 19 seconds to shoot for NJIT. A couple of substitutions. Anderson and Cash check out. Evans comes back in. So does Stoll. So it looks like the starters are back in for NJIT. About two minutes remaining. Well, this is probably what they're going to be needing because they are really in a big hole. Plummer has possession. She just checked back in. Shot clock down to 10. Feet underneath the basket, trying to post up Evans. She does. Counted and the foul. Off the glass and in. Anderson falls to the ground, but a blocking foul called against her. This will probably be what NJIT needs, being able to draw that foul against Amori Wool. They still trail, but maybe this will give them a little boost if they can try something in the last two minutes of this first half. They trail by 13, a buck 56 remaining in the second quarter. Evans at the line. The shot is no good. Hit about every part of the rim. Couldn't fall home. And it's still a 13-point Stony Brook advantage. Both these haven't really been going to the free throw line this off, so often in the first 20 minutes of action. Probably explains why, why it could be a little rusty. Dingle drifts around the perimeter. Now slices inside. Floats it up. Misses. Boucher collects the offensive rebound. Kick back out. Wool for three. Got it! Amori Wool with her big body. You don't think that she'll be able to go for too many threes, but she proved that when she was at Western Michigan. Jaden Sells on the men's side does it. Wool with her second shot from deep today. Stoll has Zeiss on her. Picks up her dribble along the baseline. Sends it back out. Three-pointer on the way. Misses a little bit too strong. Off the hand of Dalrymple. And an offensive foul called against NJIT. Stony Brook will get the ball back. A buck 15 remaining. The Seawolves have opened up a 16-point lead, their largest of the contest. 
largest overall this weekend. They were only up by as much as how much they won by yesterday, which was 12. And with the Seawolves in the bonus, Wool at the line, first shot good. Wolf catching some good fire in this first half. She's already up to double digits, leads all players, currently at 11 points now. Second shot from Wool, fall. She's two for two, and for a Stony Brook team that's been struggling from the line, nice to see them get both of those. The 18-point lead for the Seawolves with 69 seconds left before halftime. Stoll holds left wing. Stoll picks up her dribble, sends it back out to Dalrymple. Nowhere to go for her. Sends it back up top. Ball loose on the ground, picked up by Plummer. Shot clock down to eight. Who's going to put it up? Five seconds to shoot. Kick back out. Plummer for three. Can't hit. Fight for the board. Picked up by Annie Warren. 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And Stony Brook will take it. I know. Stony Brook has been it. How they've been able to work on this little 27-6 run throughout most of the second quarter, but it's been amazing. Asia Dingle picks up her dribble, dishes it off to Haley Zeiss left wing. Eight seconds to shoot. Leia Mori Wool holds at the free throw line. Back out Dingle for three. Bullseye! Dingle her first three-pointer of the day. She doesn't do much of that either. And the Seawolves have opened up a 21-point lead. 41 to 20. Eight seconds. Can NJIT close, it, close out the second quarter like they did the first? Final possession, three seconds. Stoll loses it. Ball rolls out of bounds. 0.5 on the clock. Stony Brook gets it back. 41-20. Annie Warren to inbound it. Hands it off to Asia Dingle. You hear the buzzer. A 21-point advantage heading into halftime. Stony Brook came to play today looking for the weekend sweep. Call me crazy, I don't think they've scored this many points in the first half all season long. I mean, this offensive shoot, this offensive performance that Stony Brook has gone with so far, Wool and Dingle in double digits so far, Stony Brook has so much to be proud of when, the, when playing those first 20 minutes, especially how they got that second quarter down. Outscoring the Highlanders 27 to four. I mean, how? How much of a knocker is that? I would never call you crazy, Zach. 41-20, Seawolves over the Highlanders. What a first half by the Seawolves. Let's see what they have in store for the second half. Zach and I will be back with you for the second half of action. But right now, enjoy this break. You're listening to Stony Brook Women's Basketball on the longtime home of the Seawolves, WUSB Stony Brook. And when, you do, and when we do come back, it will be just at approximately 2.52. So we will be there to recap the excellent first half by Stony Brook and give you second half action. But now, back to Natasha. Island Federal Arena right here on WUSB this Sunday afternoon with the Seawolves leading the Highlanders 41 to 20. Thanks for joining us. Jonah Carp and Zach Wilson with you, getting you ready for the second half of action. Sometimes, Zach, you look at the stat sheet, and the stats don't really tell the story of the game. I don't think that's the case today. You look at the second quarter. Mind you, at the end of the first quarter, NJIT was leading Stony Brook 16 to 14. Then the second quarter hit. Stony Brook not only outscored NJIT 27 to 4, but NJIT shooting shot just 13 percent 0 of 6 from downtown they're just 1 of 10 overall from three-point range that's the biggest reason right now why stony brook is able was able to open up such a large lead large lead yeah i mean like i said second half is not usually the strong second quarter is not usually the strong suit for stony brook in a game but they really got really reversed it, that trend today by being able to put up 27 points in this defense super stifling in every way that you can possibly imagine. When you see something like this, you have to imagine that this puts Stony Brook at a caliber, caliber of a team that can contend for that title in the American East. Maine is all, we all know that Maine women's basketball is also doing the same thing. And just to get a little quick update with sports, since we don't really get too much of that, the men's side, low scoring game, but they do lead NJIT 21 to 13 at halftime. If you thought this was an offensive splurge, you see more defense with the women's basketball, and the men's are really starting to play up that little performance today by trying to reverse that loss and get their first win of 2021. Both the men's and the women's teams are in, are well positioned in their respective standings. And we don't really know how the standings are gonna shake up toward the end of the season with 
all the differences in scheduling between all the different teams in the conference and now with Vermont on the women's side pulling out for the rest of the season. Even though Stony Brook is number two in the standings right behind Maine, we don't know how everything's going to end up, how everything's going to be calculated when the season's said and done. Yeah, we all we already told you that Vermont women's basketball discontinued their season because they were just too concerned with COVID-19 that they decided to not take that chance. So if anything, Stony Brook, we told you, was supposed to host Vermont here at IFC Arena next weekend. But with that hole being open, we're going to see how the America East is going to react to that and see if they're going to place anybody new and try and change around the schedule once more. Besides Vermont, UMBC, UAlbany, Hartford, and Maine are the last four opponents that Stony Brook still needs to play. Just about ready to get the second half underway, the Seawolves have a 21-point lead over NJIT. The second half of back-to-back -back games here at Island Federal Arena. Stony Brook looking for the sweep. If NJIT can come back and somehow pull out a victory against the Stony Brook team, it'll be the first time in program history they take down the Seawolves. But they have a large uphill climb ahead of them if they're going to do that. Well, the, well, the big fat key in this second half is to really get the offense involved. Do what you did in the first quarter and not the second quarter. Litwenko holds, sends it across to Stoll. Now back up top to Squire. NJIT with the first possession of the second half. Out to Anderson for three. Misses left, and Stony Brook gets the rebound. Asia Dingle sprints right to left. Still cold shooting from deep for NJIT. Only one so far, and that comes from Stoll. Dingle. Drifts to her right, still has possession, half the shot clock gone, now sends it back out to Erlet Scott, feed inside India Pagan, looking to post up, back out Dingle, feed to the corner, Warren for three, misses too strong, Sky for the board, Boucher, picked up by Warren. Sends it out to Dingle, Warren now holds at the top, out to Scott for three, misses too short, and the rebound is taken down by NJIT. Here comes Litwinko. Feet to the corner, it's picked off and knocked out of bounds by Scott. Well, so well, it'll stay with NJIT. Well, I saw in, quickly in those last few seconds, Ellen Kenneth Squire was wide open before Boucher had a chance to try and get to her. She could have had a chance to go for three, but she just couldn't get a read on. Litwinko inbounds it to Evans into the corner, back up top to Litwinko. Now slithers inside, kicks it back out, stole, jab step. And a feed to the corner to Squire. Back up top to Anderson. This is what we saw in the first half. A lot of passing picked off by Warren. Warren the other direction. Short two is no good. About 10 feet away from the basket. And the rebound goes to Squire. Gets inside the paint. Now picks up her dribble at the free throw line. Anderson for three. Misses back of the rim. No good. And here comes Asia Dingle for Stony Brook. Dingle gets inside. Layup off the mark. Rebound Pagan. And a jump ball called with Pagan fighting underneath with Anderson. The officials converging right now. The officials in today's game, Ed Sidlatsky, John Capolino, and Kaz Beverly. So they're going to say that it is a foul, actually. And their hand signals show that it's not a jump ball. Well, either way, Stony Brook is maintaining possession. But it's well, the hand signals did indicate a jump ball initially, but India Pagan is at the line now. She'll, she'll, she'll take a couple of shots with Stony Brook still up by 21. No scoring going on so far in the third quarter. With 93 seconds off the clock, Pagan hits the first one, and it's a 22-point lead. Pagan averaging just near 75% from the charity stripe so far this season. Now has five points. Second shot from the line. Pagan hits them both. 23-point lead, 43-20. Eight and a half remaining. Well, they're sure that you hold on to your lead as well. You, st you strike first in the second half, and that's exactly what Stony Brook does. Their defense, in absence of shooting lately from NJIT. Kick underneath the basket. Litwinko Lit nowhere to go. Sent out to Anderson in the corner. Up top to Stoll. Head fake. Now drives inside. Back out Anderson. Nine seconds to shoot. Kick underneath the cup. Evans lays it up and in. NJIT desperately needed that. It breaks the 10-0 scoring drought as Stony Brook had their own little run on. As Evans now up to seven points, and it's back to a 21-point lead in favor of Seawolves. Erlet Scott holds on the right wing. Rolls around a screen set by Boucher. Feet underneath the basket. Pagan trying to post up against Evans. Turnaround jumper is a little wild, but it falls down. 
India Pagan has done some good work here in the third quarter. She knows how to play her, play her, pre her presence on the court well. Drive to the cup along the baseline. Squire banks it off the glass and in. A little back and forth shooting now in the last few minutes between the Seawolves and the Highlanders. It's kept this game somewhat pretty close most recently. Still a 27-6 run in the last 11 and a half minutes. A 21-point advantage for Stony Brook. They have the ball. Here comes Warren. Elbow jumper is a little bit too short, but the rebound goes to India Pagan, and Stony Brook will get the offensive board. Feet underneath to Pagan, drives baseline, kicks to Boucher, almost loses the handle. 12 seconds to shoot for Stony Brook. Brook back out to Asia Dingle. Elbow jumper, misses too strong. Back to Pagan, lays it up and in. A third opportunity on offense for Stony Brook. Now that is something, really getting off of that historic second quarter that we'll probably be fact into just shortly. Stoll holds right wing. NJIT looking to close the gap. Kick underneath, Litwinko misses the short bunny. And Annie Warren gets the rebound for Stony Brook. Here comes Asia Dingle. 47-24, back out Warren, pops the three. Can't hit, too short. And Stoll grabs the board for NJIT. Approaching the six minute mark in the third quarter. Litwinko trying to drive to the cup. Her lane is closed off. Back underneath to Evans, trying to post up. Foul called against Mackenzie Boucher. 6.01 remaining in the third quarter. 47-24, Seawolves over the Highlanders and substitutions now on both sides. Well, for Stony Brook in this third quarter, to begin the second half, their defense has still continued to play that factor, keeping close, a little man-to-man -man coverage or player-to-player -player, since we're talking about women's college basketball here. But still, being able to stay close and not allow any room for any shooting, it's been a good gift for Stony Brook and their defense today. First shot from Evans falls after Mackenzie Boucher was called for the shooting foul. 6.01 remaining in the third quarter. Second shot from Evans. She hits them both. Kimmy Evans only shoots it at about 42% from the free throw line this season. 21 point advantage for Stony Brook. Four minutes off the clock in the third quarter. And here comes a little full court pressure by the Highlanders. And it almost leads to a turnover. Dingle gets it back. She needs to cross the timeline. And she does, she gets it across just in time. 20 seconds to shoot. We have, we, well, if you're still but gotta continue to expect this now. Kick to the right corner, three ball on the way, misses, Dingle can't hit, fight for the board. Leia Mori Wool foul called on the floor as Wool grabbed the rebound for Stony Brook. And that foul is gonna go against the Highlanders. It almost looked like it could've been close to a jump ball since both of them tried to grab that ball. Apparently Grace Plummer was guilty of that foul. So Stony Brook to inbound it with the shot clock reset to 20 and the inbound pass is a little bit wild. Dingle trying to track it down. She still can't. Picked up by Scott who was the inbound passer. Scott drives to the basket. Can't hit off the glass and here comes NJIT. She tried to, dry, she tried to draw a little contact but she just wasn't really successful at that. Litwinko to the cup. Puts it down. That wasn't an easy shot to make against Scott. I think that was the type of shot that she that Scott was trying to go for. Asia Dingle, quick bunny, got it. Keeps things right where they, right, so, right where Sonny Brook hoping is, has to stay, continues to keep their 21 point lead. Dingle now with a game high 13. Litwinko picks up her dribble and sends it back out to Squire. NJIT hasn't been able to cut into this deficit. It's been question and answer so far in the third quarter. Litwinko spins around, back turn toward the basket. Back out to Plummer, drives baseline, reverse layup is swatted back and out of bounds. Erlet Scott got a hand in there. So with 4.48 left to go, we may as well keep it here because this game of protecting the basketball since that first quarter where they had five turnovers. Out to Plummer, off the inbound. She misses from downtown, too strong. And the, reba and the rebound was tried to uh, be tracked down by Squire. She couldn't handle it and Stony Brook will get the ball back. Four minutes, 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Still 49-28, Stony Brook over NJIT. Looks like there's a little full court pressure before by NJIT, but since Dingle was right near the half court line, they just decided to not risk it. Dingle with her back turned toward the basket, right side of the perimeter, sends it back out to Cox, inside. Wool, turnaround jumper, puts it down. Leia Mori Wool puts Stony Brook back up by 23. 
Bounces inside the net along the rim. And now Wool at 14 points. Plummer dances around, picks up her dribble. Players on the floor. No whistle blown. Kick back out. Long two on the way. Misses a little bit too short. Dalrymple couldn't hit. And here comes Stony Brook. Asia Dingle pushing in transition, orchestrating this offense. Sent inside. Leia Amori Wool can't handle it. And the ball is picked off by Dalrymple. Quickly the other direction, Dalrymple pushes up ahead to Plummer. Sent back out, Dalrymple in the corner, nowhere to go. Back out to Plummer, now inside to Squire, drifts inside, whistle blown, foul called on the floor, and it's an offensive foul. Well, NJIT has plenty of opportunities so far in this game to try and get the shots down, but their shooting continues to be quite cold. Just not what they want, especially now that Ken Squire has three fouls. That puts her in foul trouble. As if this game for NGIT hasn't gone bad enough. Victoria Johnson checks in for Janae Cox. And Victoria Johnson crosses the timeline for Stony Brook. Having a conversation with Asia Dingle outside the perimeter. 3.20 remaining in the third quarter. Victoria Johnson at the top of the key. Sends it right to Dingle. Shot clock down to eight. Dingle, crossover, drives, right side, floats it up. No, four seconds to shoot. Dingle still has the ball, kicks it back out. Wool for three, misses to the right side. Offensive rebound, Stony Brook underneath. Victoria Johnson can't lay it up and in. Another offensive rebound, this time to Scott. Here comes Dingle, drives left alley. Contact underneath and a foul call. Uh, just a little quick stat about Leah Amori Wool. She does have 14 points so far. She is one point shy of, a se of her season high where she got against UMass Lowell back on December 28th where she picked up 15. If she continues to play big, she could go near her career high, which is 23 that she got against Toledo back in January last year. So Dingle. Ding Dingle couldn't hit the first shot from the free throw line. It's been a little cold today with that. It's only 0-2 it's, it's so far. Second shot. Rattles home. But this time it does go for a little ding. 52-28. Stony Brook with a big margin over NJIT. Litwinko, crossover. Left elbow, sends it back out Plummer. Up top to Brereton. Nowhere to go. Inside to Litwinko. Turn around, jumper. Misses too short. Leia Mori wool skies for the rebound. Hands it off to Dingle. Crosses the timeline right to left. And... Resets the offense. Hands it off to Victoria Johnson. Swung back around to Scott. Outside Johnson for three. Cash. Victoria Johnson with her first three-pointer of the season. Her first points of the game. And Stillingbrook continues to put up quite an offensive clinic. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. 55-28. Kennedy Cash drives to the right side. Swung to the left. Plummer for three. Can't hit. Wool rebound. Hands it off to Dingle. And Dingle will walk it right to left. Dingle in no rush. No need to be when you have a big lead. 27 point advantage. Outside. Wool for three. No. Too short. Litwinko. Sprinting left to right. Trying to get to the basket, and she has pickpocketed. Stony Brook trying to rush the other direction as Asia Dingle falls to the ground. Contact in the backcourt, and that's going to be a defensive foul against NJIT. Stony Brook continues to try and keep the force rolling. Dingle was rattled around a little bit, but now it sends her back to the free throw line after she is one of three so far in this contest. A buck 21 remaining in the third quarter. Dingle hits the first. Dingle at 15 points. She does have a season high 22 that she got in the loss to Fordham. And Dingle hits them both, 57-28. Dingle was the first America East player of the week winner this season and shows you everything that she did when she was able to make quite the impact in her first game as a Seawolf coming out of Kent State. Dingle tied for the team lead with 14 points on 6 of 14 shooting today. Litwinko picks up her dribble left elbow. 
Sends it out to Myers and a whistle blown and a foul called against Stony Brook. 1-11 left in the third quarter. The Seawolves up by 29. An impressive showing this entirety, uh, this entire game. Feed inside to Litwinko. Back out Evans. Hands it off to Brereton, trying to get inside. She's tied up, and the ball is loose. Picked up by Haley Zeiss. Out to Victoria Johnson. Contact the other way as Johnson was trying to drive to the basket. So now it'll be Johnson heading to the free throw line as NJIT is still over the limit. And that's the fourth foul on Candy Cash. She ain't making that much of a deposit today. <laughs> Seawolves up by 29. First shot from Johnson at the line. Hits. A 30-point lead for Stony Brook. 55 seconds left in the third quarter. Second shot. Is good. 31-point lead. 59 to 28. Nice little bonanza that Stony Brook continues to stay. There was a chance for NGIT to try and reverse that trend, but... Stony Brook got scoring it by 10 in this third quarter. Nothing changing. Cash holds at the top of the perimeter. Out to Brereton left side. Kick back out to Evans. Hands it off to Myers. Sent back up top to Litwinko. Pass picked off. Stony Brook pushing in transition. Gonzalez the other direction. High shot off the rim. No good. And the ball goes out of bounds. Seawolves will maintain possession. A little bit of a wild shot. Gonzalez trying to sprint to the line, or sprint to the, the cup, rather. 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Zeiss will inbound it. 20 to shoot. Zeiss gets it over to Johnson. Back out to Zeiss, left wing. Inside to Pagan, trying to post up Raritan. Spins to the cup and finishes off the glass. That's where India Pagan plays her strategy the most. That's where she excels the most by being able to drive it within the paint. She's looked very consistent, especially when she shoots well. Evans on the outside. Six seconds to shoot. Here comes Litwinko. Tries to get past the double team. She can't. And here comes Stony Brook the other direction. Last shot, no good. A 33-point lead for Stony Brook entering the fourth quarter. This has been an offensive clinic that Stony Brook has put up here at Island Federal Arena trying to complete the weekend sweep against their conference foe, NJIT Highlanders. They have 10 minutes to do so. We're going to take a quick break and come back with you. You're listening to Stony Brook Women's Basketball and the longtime home of the Seawolves, 90.1 FM, WUSB Stony Brook. Buccaneers struck first. What? Buccaneers strike for, struck first. Touchdown? Yeah. Um, to see. who? Here it is. Oh, Mike Evans. Ready to Evans in the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> who is that he beat out? <laughs> I guess nothing's changed from week five. Hmm. Who wants the leading scorer on the team? What? Rodriguez, the leading scorer on the team. Rodriguez? How's, um... I don't know. <laughs> I guess everyone else doing. <laughs> They're up. 
they're, they're up by four, less than 16 minutes to go. Okay. Back with you from Island Federal Arena, 61-28. Yeah, that's the score entering the fourth quarter. Back with you, Jonah Karp and Zach Wilson. A 33-point lead for Stony Brook, trying to close out a weekend sweep against their America East foes, NJIT Highlanders. Yesterday's game was a lot closer than this, Zach, and the stats reflect today's game. Yeah, everything that Stony Brook has done the last two quarters really, really, really defines what their offensive performance has done. Part of that 14-0 run that they currently have. Stony Brook gets first possession in this fourth quarter. Zeiss holds right wing. Feet underneath to Pagan, trying to post up against Evans. Gets inside, layup off the glass and in. A 25-point lead for the Seawolves. What more can India, can India Pagan do? She has just eclipsed her season high. She had a, with 13 last weekend against New Hampshire. Now she has a new one with 14 points today. Pardon me, I said 25. I meant 35-point lead. Yeah, it's just still unimaginable to see how this can happen. I mean, if you're, like I said, you're UConn, then it can't be any surprise. Only five seconds to shoot, and it still looks like NJIT is setting up a play. Who's going to put it up? Here comes Litwinko for three. She can't hit at the buzzer, and Stony Brook will get the ball back. One minute off the clock in this fourth quarter. Still nothing to answer defensively. Last six and a half minutes, no score. Victoria Johnson holds right wing against Squire inside to Pagan. Her lane is closed off and it's sent back out to Gigi Gonzalez, who resets the offense. Eight seconds to shoot for Stony Brook. Gonzalez pulls back, three-pointer, splash! Gigi Gonzalez gets, finally gets her first points of the game, and it's a three. Make that a 19-0 run. 66-28. Evans for three. She responds. And this is finally something that NJIT desperately need. Even though it's probably not going to change the result of this game, that's what the offense needs to start getting the little, little confidence back to start scoring some points. Gonzalez drifts to the right side of the perimeter, dishes it off to Pagan, hands it off to Victoria Johnson. Outside, Zeiss for three, rattles in and out, and Evans gets the board. Close to a response by Zeiss. Just couldn't finish. Squire all the way to the cup, struggles with her dribble, and a foul called against Stony Brook the other direction. 66-31. Seven minutes, 56 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. As well as Stony Brook has played on offense, and we noted just how historic that second quarter was for Stony Brook, where they outscored the Highlanders 27-4. It's been a struggle today shooting for NJIT. Bounce pass inside. Litwinko turns around. Layup is off the mark a little bit too short. Gonzalez gets the rebound. Pushes up ahead in tempo. Johnson, long two, misses two short. Fight for the board. And Anderson comes down with the board for NJIT. Starting to see a little more of those bench players come in because you know with Stony Brook having the lead that they do now, it's going to be very soon for them to start calling a lot more. Three-pointer rattles home. That's the, hit near the top of the backboard. And if that did, that would have negated the three. But a couple of extra bounces, that could be a, that could be a top play. Not playing the America East this weekend. First points of the series for Aria Myers against Stony Brook. It's a three-pointer from the corner. And it's a 32-point advantage for Stony Brook. And a little 6-0 run by NJIT. Three minutes off the clock in this fourth quarter. A tie-up at the top of the perimeter, and they're going to call this another jump ball and possession in favor of NJIT. More substitutions for the Highlanders. Three minutes off the clock as the Highlanders inbound it. You figured that Stony Brook, like I said, starting to put in some bench players, but that's giving NGIT more of a chance, even though this team's still probably too far away from the Highlanders to make a comeback. Plummer holds at the top, gets it over to Myers, who struggles with her dribble, half the shot clock gone, swings it back around to Anderson, her lane closed off, Evans for three, rattles it home. Another three-pointer for Evans. Three straight threes made by the Highlanders after 
after some changes that Stony Brook has made because they believe they're going to win this game. But now it's a 29-point lead, and of course there's of course, still going to have minutes left to go, but if anything, Stony Brook, you just want to be a little careful. Well, a 29-point lead with six minutes remaining. It's uh, tough to see as Gigi Gonzalez gets the basket, puts it down. Well, now a 66-37 lead, back to 29. Six minutes remaining, or excuse me, 68-37, 31-point lead. Anderson at the top, Plummer along the baseline. Dalrymple, nowhere to go, back out Plummer for three. She airballs it, and Victoria Johnson gets the rebound for Stony Brook. After they made three straight shots from deep, that little streak of theirs ends. So Stony Brook in no rush on offense. A methodically paced offense now with a hefty advantage in the scoring column. Gigi Gonzalez picks up her dribble. Tight defense on her. Haley Zeiss back underneath. The little floater is no good. Fight for the board and tracked down by Victoria Johnson. Shot clock reset to 20. Aminata Z getting some action late in this ball game. Zeiss pops the three, she can't hit, tie up underneath. Z was right there, working against Evans and a foul called right underneath the basket. Who's a loose ball foul on? It looks like it's against Evans based on her confusion. 5.07 remaining in the fourth quarter. 68-37, Seawolves over the Highlanders. This is still a nice lineup to see, nice little lineup to see right now on the court. Victoria Johnson in her senior year. Gigi Gonzalez is a sophomore, could get, could get significant more playing time next season as she continues to try and improve. Gonzalez maintains her dribble, drifting to the right side of the perimeter. Out to Victoria Johnson, pops the right wing three, misses too short, ball out of bounds. And it looks like it was off of Haley Zeiss of Stony Brook. Timeout on the floor, 4.50 remaining in the ball game. The Seawolves up 68. 37. They have a comfortable lead. It looks like they'll finish with a comfortable victory, but we still have about five minutes remaining, and we're going to step aside. You're listening to Stony Brook Women's Basketball on the longtime home of the Seawolves, 90.1 FM, WUSB Stony Brook. Check this out. Whoa. Two minutes ago was a eight point lead for Stony Brook. I don't know where it is now. Let's go, Omar. Ooh, that was close. This song is so messed up. Eh.
Back here at Island Federal Arena, 4.50 remaining in the ball game. The Seawolves have a massive advantage in the scoring column over NJIT, 68-37. If you're just joining us, yeah, that score pretty much reflects how this game has gone for the Highlanders, not just the score, but the individual stats. Four of 19 from downtown, 14 turnovers for the Highlanders, compared to nine for Stony Brook, and they've been out-rebounded by a hefty margin as well. A lot of the reserves in right now. Here comes Plummer, driving baseline, kick to the left corner, nowhere to go, half the shot clock on, drive inside, Brereton can't hit off the back of the rim but she'll head to the line after the foul is called. Rather, that's Fuchs, not Brereton. Well, Haley Zeiss does what she can to try and play defense. She's been known to do pretty well with that on more than one occasion. She's been able to pick up three steals leading the team in that category today. First shot is good for Maria Fuchs from Argentina. Fuchs is just around 60% shooting from the free throw line this season. Hasn't seen a lot of action today and that was her first point. Here's her second point, two for two from the line. 68-39 with four and a half remaining. Now the full court press is on. Gigi Gonzalez smothered in the backcourt. They need to get it across the timeline. And the pass goes out to Haley Zeiss, who is across the timeline. Just in time, Stony Brook will try to eat up as much as, of clock as they can. Gigi Gonzalez rolls around a screen, now pulls back, three-pointer, splash! Another shot for Gonzalez, and she... And even, in these, and even in these few minutes where nothing means much, she just continues to show how much potential that she has. Sunnybrook not letting up on the offensive side. 71, that is a new season high in points in the game. Plummer drives baseline, her lane closed off. Pass out of bounds. Another turnover for NJIT. It looks like we got a new substitution coming up, a new player that doesn't really see much action. Kelly's Corley. Kelly, Kelly's Corley. So the forward from Capitol Heights, Maryland, went to St. John's College. She did have some playing time when Seawolves defeated Manhattan. So Caroline McCombs emptying her bench. As the pass, tracked down by Haley Zeiss, sent back up top to Gigi Gonzalez, who resets. 71-39. A mountainous lead for Stony Brook late in this game. Three and a half remaining. Victoria Johnson nowhere to go. Back out Gonzalez. Now a three-pointer on the way. Misses a little bit too short, but an offensive board for Stony Brook. Tire bench was, near, was about ready to be fired up for Corley getting her first collegiate points. She'll try again. Drives baseline. Euro step. Layup. No good. Fight for the board. Rebound NJIT. Two opportunities for Corley that was just incredibly close to making. She should have had at least one of them. Back door is open. Dalrymple didn't want to put it up. Instead, swung back out. Plummer thinks about a three. No. Out to Fuchs. Sent to the right corner. Evans doesn't shoot a three. And with five seconds to shoot, Dalrymple just hurls it up and can't hit. That's about how well this game has gone for NJIT. A lot of passing. Not a lot of chemistry on the offensive side. And as a result, a lot of turnovers, a lot of missed shots. And Stony Brook has a large advantage with two and a half remaining. Haley Zeiss at the free throw line. Drives inside, can't hit. Z underneath, puts it up and in. Z doesn't play too much. She had some playing time in the second quarter yesterday. And now she's getting more time in after not playing last year. She shows just she's gonna try and be one of those future players that can co contribute on the floor. Long two on the way, no good from Myers, who hit a three earlier in this game. And a whistle blown on the floor with 2.01 remaining, 73-39. A 34-point lead for Stony Brook over NJIT, and you better believe there will be a whole lot of substitutions coming out of this timeout. It's gonna, well, Stony Brook using this little game of theirs to get themselves fired up what they've been hoping for as much. As I said, the most points that they had in a game so far this season, the previous was 65 that they got at Manhattan back on December 8th. And that did result in a 13 point victory for Stony Brook. Their wins so far this season, two of their, their wins against Binghamton, they were both just right around 65, 57 or something. It was right around that category. Against UMass Lowell, they had 60. And against New Hampshire, 
that was 64. So you can definitely put up this game as the best offensive performance of the season so far by Stony Brook. And the effort has been there from wire to wire for Stony Brook in this game. You ready for this? NJIT came into this series as the leading rebounding team in the conference. Today, Stony Brook has out-rebounded NJIT 52 to 24. 52 to 24. And a major reason is because of that is that NJIT has only had two offensive rebounds, while Stony Brook has had 21. 21 to 2 in that category shows you how Stony Brook has been doing well to keep NJIT from boxing out against the Seawolves. Incredibly tough defense, as we continue to mention, is top 10 in the nation in points allowed per game. And after they've allowed only 39 so far, which is, also, which is bigger than their season average, it just shows you that a bit, defense wins championships. Stony Brook had that ability last year, and if they keep this mentality up, you can imagine how Stony Brook is going to try and contend with Maine for that America East title. Stony Brook and Maine are the last two America East regular season champions. Last year, Stony Brook won after they went to Vermont and got that come from behind victory on February, February 20, February 19th. And that was really a big milestone, especially for Caroline McCombs, because all those years of being the head coach, being the winningest head coach in program history, achieving career win number 100 last year in that conference opener against UMBC, finally paid off. The extension she got over the offseason shows you just how much this team wants to keep her. And, they stay, and if she continues to stay with them, it shows you just how it's going to, how this future continues to look very bright for this little, little team in Long Island. Stony Brook with 18 second chance points compared to zero for the Highlanders today. An 18 seems like a low number when you consider the discrepancy in offensive rebounds between these two teams and certainly the score, 73-39 with 2.01 remaining in the ball game. Gigi Gonzalez gets the inbound pass, sends it across the court to Zeiss, crosses the timeline, back to Gonzalez. Leah Burden checks in for Victoria Johnson in the last two minutes of this game. Z sets the screen, Gonzalez rolls around it, picks up her dribble. Nine seconds to shoot for Stony Brook, a wild shot underneath the basket. Zeiss trying to grab the rebound, and it's picked up by NJIT with 90 seconds remaining. Corley almost had another opportunity to get the shot in, and it was very close. Underneath the basket, a shot falls for Brereton, the other direction for the Highlanders. 73-41, a buck 20 remaining in the game. Gigi Gonzalez walks it across the timeline and a foul called near the timeline. It almost looked like a backcourt violation with how close Gigi Gonzalez was, but it's gonna go against NJIT. Stony Brook will maintain possession. And now a full five substitution with a minute 16 remaining for the Highlanders, a new five on the floor. And most of them are still consisting of starters, which is pretty somewhat shocking, I guess you could say. Squire, along with Stollers in there, and Anderson, that, that too. I mean, you have 116 left to go, and you know that this game's already over. But I guess, you, but I guess unlike Stony Brook, NGIT wants to give their starters still some mentality to try and get some more points down before the end of this game. Well, there are a lot of young players, and that's being kind to NJIT. 11 underclassmen on this team. So a lot of the underclassmen are starters. Gigi Gonzalez, top of the perimeter, pulls back, three-pointer, misses too strong, rebound, Stony Brook. Underneath the basket, wild shot, no good. And Stoll grabs the board for NJIT. 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. Squire in the corner, feed underneath. Anderson turnaround jumper off the mark. Zeiss grabs the board for Stony Brook, still fighting, whistle blown. That's a loose, pretty close to a loose ball foul that appeared. Meanwhile, just a quick update on the men's side. They still lead the game, apparently, as Rodriguez is now up to 14 points, leading all scores. By the way, Kennedy Cash has fouled out. Zero points in seven minutes. So Stony Brook really took a big withdrawal in this game against her. It's the second time you've used that. You get one more of those. Well, I guess that's not even necessary since, <laughs> she's, since it's done. The bank is closed for cash. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Eight seconds off the shot clock. Stony Brook looking for insurance points. And the ball batted back. Shot clock reset 
to 20 with Gigi Gonzalez. One second differential. Pulling it back across uh, the, the sideline with 12 seconds remaining in the ball game. Yeah, like you said, one second differential. They might just use up the remaining of the clock. Gonzalez dancing around the perimeter. Three seconds to shoot. Gonzalez, will she put up a shot? No. A shot clock violation. 1.2 remaining in the ball game. And NJIT will have final possession, trailing 73-41. There's the buzzer. And that's the end of this game. 73-41, the final score. Stony Brook sweeps the weekend series against their America East rival, NJIT Highlanders. With the victory, they improved to 8-4 and 6-2 and and in the America East. Well, this was just an amazing win for Stony Brook after it was nearly close yesterday. Even without Vargas Reyes, they got back Haley Zeiss, and even though she didn't get too much done with the team, her presence on the court defensively, as she led the team with three steals today, shows you everything to need to know, and Leah Mori wool didn't play much at the end, but she got herself into a double-double today. 14 points, 10 rebounds, and Dingle, once again, looking like that sharp lean score that the Seawolves need out of her. Has a lot of that's a lot of a heavy heart to play this season, and we all know why. 27 to 4 was the, the, the scoring column in the second quarter alone for Stony Brook against NJIT. And getting lost in the shuffle, 20 to 8, Stony Brook outscored NJIT in the third quarter. This is this was an impressive showing for the Seawolves from wire to wire in this game. Mind you, they were trailing at the end of the first quarter, 16 to 14, and it looked like NJIT came to play and were looking for a victory, but Stony Brook quickly shut that down. At the end of the day, NJIT just couldn't hit any shots from downtown, ended up shooting just 21% from three-point range, and Stony Brook took advantage of a lot of second-chance opportunities and a lot more offensive rebounds than their opponent had today. Yeah, and after, like I said, that historic 27-4 run in the second quarter that really got their confidence back up for good. After they were trailing by two at the end of the first, that's the last time that NGIT looked really good in any way, but they were 4 of 10 shooting in that fourth quarter and just 2 of 15 shooting in the second quarter. More bench players like Gigi Gonzalez was able to get heavily involved. Gonzalez had 8 points. Victoria Johnson had 5 points. And Z, she had two points off of that rebound. And there were multiple opportunities for Kelly's Corley to get the shot. She was close to a three. She was close to some shots. And they were just banking around. But you could probably expect a little bit of that with a freshman. But I can still see that with something like that, Corley has a lot of potential in her future. And everybody else on this team should be very thankful for their best offensive performance of the season by far. So with the victory, Stony Brook improves to 8-4 and four overall, 6-2 and two in conference play. NJIT falls to 4-12 and 12 overall, 4-8 and eight in conference play this season. Stony Brook still second in the standings behind Maine, camp coming into today 11-1 overall, 8-1 and one in conference play. Here's the thing, we don't know what's going to happen scheduling-wise for either of these teams next week. NJIT, you look on their schedule, it's TBD. They have yet to face Albany. That game, though, though that series was postponed a couple weeks ago, so maybe they'll see Albany next week. Stony Brook was supposed to face Vermont next weekend, and that's not going to happen. Vermont women's basketball has canceled the rest of their season. So follow along on all our social media platforms. We'll keep you updated. Keep checking the schedules. You'll probably know as soon as, I, as, soon as we do. Uh, how the schedule is going to shake up as far as next weekend and beyond is concerned. Once again, the final score from inside Island Federal Arena, 73-41. Stony Brook taken down NJIT at home. For Zach Wilson, I'm Jonah Karp saying so long and thanks for listening.